Hello and welcome back to Quartzlight, your car brochure channel. Today is the turn of the Vauxhall Chevette. Welcome back and incidentally if you are into car brochures, I'm sure many of us have been in the past or still are, uh, please consider subscribing, it certainly helps the channel but more importantly I'm sure you'll find many interesting little things and key facts um, along the way. But back to today's episode, the Vauxhall Chevette, first introduced in 1975, it ran all the way till 1984. There as very much a small family entry car for Vauxhall um, based on the Opel Cadet C. Now the Vauxhall Chevette, a lot of people got different opinions on the Chevette. I think it's got a little bit of a soft spot for me because my granddad did have one. I think mean, he had a Marina and then he, he sold that and he got a Vauxhall Chevette for a small time. And I think a lot of the times it doesn't really matter how good or bad the car was. If it's kind of like in your past or you remember it from a family member, I think it kind of like means a little bit more. But anyway, let's have a look at today's brochure, the Vauxhall Chevette. So, like I say, the Chevette came out in 75, and this is a, an early brochure from 75. I think there is a date on there somewhere, um, if the camera can pick that up. Um, what is it? March 1975, revised December 75. And you can see that dealer stamp there, Pontifract um, dealership stamp. So that's an interesting little thing. Sales started in May 75, so you can see that's a very early brochure. We do also have a little bit of a price list there as well, and this is a very old price list. Amazing this has survived this little, little piece of uh, paper. This is actually for the full range for Vauxhall, dated the 2nd of May 75, so the original first um, price list for the Chevette, and it does actually say them to include new Chevette prices. Ooh. So maybe we should have a quick look inside here. Um, so it doesn't just show the Chevette price listed, it does actually show the full list. So maybe we'll just zoom in on that. So an interesting thing, I guess we can actually see the full range here of Vauxhall in 75. So Chevette, Viva, Magnum, Victor, Victor continued, VX490 and Ventura. So that would have been your Vauxhall range, I guess, um, in 1975. And a little bit of a list here, if you know, you're interested in a car, you could get your dealer to fill that out and see how much it was going to be. But you can see Chevette right down there at the bottom of, uh, of the range, even lower than a Viva, amazingly. Let's just zoom in what the price would have been. And you can say £1,593, 54 for that base model, um, for the L, £1,649. Dollars a uh, pound, I do apologize, and 70 pence if you wanted that nice starfire metallic paint. Another 10 or so pounds on top of that. The Viva actually has got a lower starting price, but you can see it goes all the way up to 1838. And the most expensive car at this time, uh, 3038 for an estate. So you can see, uh, really what I'm trying to say is, you know, the Chevette was the most basic model and it was happy to stay in that position as being your, your base model. So there we go, we can see the Chevette then was the most basic model um, of the Vauxhall range. This is a 75 brochure. Um, we're not going to spend too much on this because in 75 there was only a hatchback and I wanted to really show more models than just the hatchback. So it was advertised at the time as a sports coupe, a family saloon, a handy estate. So it was trying to do lots of different things. But of course, later on, we got in the saloon, we got an estate. This was just how it started out. You'll also notice on these early ones um, how the headlamps are actually recessed. We'll look at a later one that them headlamps are actually flush. Another thing I wanted to just quickly look at on this particular brochure was these amazing seats. 
rather than showing the colour scheme, they rather just show all those lovely colours. And what a great, um, what a great system in these sort of tartan seats. I think the seats themselves are absolutely look absolutely fantastic. Also, at this time, we've got the Chevette, Chevette L, and the Chevette GL. So just three models in the rep lineup, a 1256 cc engine but like i said i don't want to spend too much time on this brochure because today's brochure is actually going to be this one from 1982 and you can see straight away how they've uh, flushed these headlamps out at this time flushed flushed them out doesn't really sound right that does it but they made the the flush fitting of the headlight is what i'm trying to say there um so that happened in 79 76 we got an estate in september and i think the saloon um also came out in 76 around about i think they were june 76 they came out so this is an 81 82 brochure so we can see all those different models and that's why i decided to choose this particular brochure to highlight the chevette and we can see, see straight away this would be the top of the range model um, we'll also look out the uh, the range changed by this stage because there's a few more different uh, models in by this stage and also we can have a glimpse at these new models we've got so a four-door and a two-door saloon and as it says a great name in value mostering it was all for value for money um, but let's have a quick look at some of this text so here it's saying few cars have so consistently held popular esteem as the Vauxhall Chevette and for 1982 there's even more in built value and completely new interiors that enhance the Chevette's modern appeal. Stylish, economical to run, great fun to drive and four seater comfort, generous load space and well proven reliability. It's easy to see why the Chevette is constantly among the top best sellers and i think between sort of like 1975 78 i think it was or really at the top i think it may even been the uk's best selling hatch um, between those dates so it certainly was a popular car it did very well its appeal is wide attractive to young and experienced drivers both male and female its 1300 engine produces plenty of power when you need it the road hauling and handling still sets it apart from more mundane competitors etc etc and it goes on to tell us a little bit about the range all the chevette's virtuals are evident in three body styles smart saloon sporty hatch and capacious estate Depending on the model you choose, there are four levels of trim and equipment to ensure there's a Chevette that's just right. From the Super Value ES through to the luxurious GL. What's more, if you like the extra refinement of the auto transmission, you can specify that too on the L and GL models. And we'll, of course, look at some of those um, specifications and the different models as we go through this brochure. Um, I think on this front page it's showing that's the Chevette L. That would be the Chevette E. And the super, super basic ES, um, which was introduced later to become even lower than the E. But we'll have a look at that in more detail later as well. But like I said, super basic you know even down to chrome bumper and who just got a plain black one and this would have been your range topper the chevette gl um, one of the things i did used to like about these chevette uh, saloons i can't remember which side it was on actually but this little flap either on this side or the other used to open up and the little gas or petrol cap used to be hidden behind there and i quite used to like that it was a little nice little touch to hide that away i never know why that didn't really catch on in the other models um why they stopped hiding the gas cap i presumed it was for some kind of safety reason but if you know jot that down in the comments that'd be interesting to have a look at and then it goes on to say uh, fully refined plus dependable virtues 
Now, I don't want to read all of this because um, the video would end up being far too long. But if we go down to the bottom here where it's saying sporty, it talks a little bit about the 1256cc engine. And it does actually mention these flush fitting headlamps give an even, an even beam spread. And with deep penetration makes for a relaxed night driving. So it's saying that they did it for an actual reason, not just for looks. I don't know. If there's anything in that or not um, and it goes on to uh, there are no less than seven new colors added so such a basic cheap car but they've got this great color range please let's bring that back again on 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 cheaper cars we want a big color range not just gray please now if we look over the leaf and i must admit before i revisited this brochure i kind of forgot about the estate um, I don't remember seeing too many estates around at the time. I'm sure there was. Jot down in the comments if you remember the estates. I completely have forgotten about them. But like I said, if we go back to that 1975 brochure, it's talking about that hatchback being um, an estate vehicle. Well, here we go. An actual practical estate, which is very nice to see. But of course, as we see when we turn the next page, the hatchback is still firmly with us. 70s was very much a term of everyone you know, bringing out these hatchbacks. So that's really why the Chevette came straight out with a hatchback. And I think it was the right move to do. Um, but like I say, they broadened it with the saloon and this very cavernous, for a small car at least, a state car. It continues talking about things like the automatic transmission and more luxury with driver um, appeal. And it does talk about some of the improvements. So it says, in fact, Chevette seating is generally shows a lot of careful attention to detail. On four door saloons, for example, we modified the corners of the rear seat cushions to make getting in and out easier and more graceful. On hatchbacks, there was a number of comfort improvements. We've added a bolster to the base of the folding seat backs. Now, the latest improvement is full face cloth upholstery on all models except that super basic ES. This means that the upholstery material extends across the full width of the seat face with no vinyl extending around from the sides. Chevette interiors have always been noted for their airy spaciousness. For 1982, they've enlivened with extended colour keyed according to the model. And you can see uh, these new seats and this particular one all in red. And then on the next page, an example in this sort of like green colour with this nice sort of metallic green exterior colour, which all looks very nice, I think. If we look at the next page, it's more examples of more seats. So we've still got this red one and this sort of like a, uh, a tartan design. I don't think the seats look quite as nice as that original model. I must admit but there we go we also get an example of the interior this is a top of the range model this is the gl you can just about make out the gl badge there and then finally this particular brochure goes on to tell us the different uh, models available so the es and the e so Later on, the kind of like the E was the super basic model, and that was really made as more like a fleet uh, model. It was that basic, but for whatever reason, October 1980, they decided to bring out the even more basic ES. And like I said before, these little black bumpers, and you can see really stripped down basic version. I don't remember seeing the ES again. I wonder how many ESs are still around today. As some for some bizarre reason, and I can't explain it. I do quite like the super basic models for each version. I'm not quite sure why. We'll have a quick look at some of this text. I know this this video is starting to get a little bit lengthy, but we'll just have a brief look on that. When first introduced at the Earl's Court Motor Show in 1980, the Chevette ES specifications, coupled to its price, created a sensation. It's still sensational. Here's a car that embodies all the style and engineering refinements of the Chevette range at a price that makes it one of the best buys available in the UK. 
Available as a two door saloon or three door hatch, it offers four seater comfort, big load carrying capacity, exceptional driving ease and great all round economy. In addition, it has a standard of handling and road holding that makes it a pleasure to drive. The lively, well-proven 1256cc engine is coupled to a slick, four-speed gearbox with a short throw that makes for crisp action. Front disc and rear drum brakes with servo assistance. All coil suspension with front anti-roll bar plus light action rack and pinion steering endorse the superb value of the ES. I don't have the actual price, unfortunately, of the ES, but no, no, it was very well priced and sort of your budget motoring. I guess this is the days before um, uh, car companies like Larder and Skoda took over this sort of market in the UK. Um, uh, at this time, there was certainly a little bit of a space for these super cheap vehicles. We then move up to the E and it says the Chevette E opens up a choice of three styles, two or four door saloons, three door hatch or three door estate. Saloons and hatchbacks have Piper check cloth upholstery, whilst the E estate, usually chosen as a hard working load carrier, has highly durable vinyl trim. Um, yeah, I'm sure that was horrendous. We've then got the Chevette L, in this sort of green colour with a nice metallic green which looks quite nice and we get a little bit of a glimpse of that basic interior on the L. We kind of like always think of the L as being the base model but here it's you know we're three models up aren't we to get the L um, but still it's not hugely well equipped it says the Shiver L model provides that blend of extra refinement and comfort to make them outstandingly popular. It then goes on to say it's got Donegal tweed cloth upholstery, reclining front seats, manual tune radio and additional sound installation. There's no shortage of comfort and convenience either and with a driver's door, po door pocket to hold a host of oddments, a vanity mirror and a quartz clock. On the road you'll appreciate the dipping rear view mirror and wipers with intermittent wipe action together with a heated rear window, radio ply tyres, reverse lights and hazard warning flashes. And it goes on to say you can also have an automatic. Of the range the GL and these nice sort of red seats I particularly like. Again this is a little GL badge. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit actually on these pictures. So yeah, top of the range, you just about make out the GL badge like I was trying to say. Um, and you can see the practicality of the estate with these folding rear seats. On the saloon model shown here, you've got sort of this little black area at the back to show that this is the uh, uh, range topper. And these very nice wheels actually. It says, please note, road wheel styles may vary from that shown, but I do particularly like these little wheels on there. They do suit the car. So it says the Chevette GL, this is a Chevette that provides luxury car needs, not necessarily be big, discreet extra bright work, body side protection mouldings and distinctive wheels immediately identify this top model either in four door saloon or three door hatch. Inside, dapple velour upholstery confirms the look Yuri. Front seat head restraints are adjustable for height and angle. The push button radio is a GL feature, together with a cigar lighter, a centre console and tray. In addition to cloth inserts, lower door sections are carpeted to obviate scuffing and both front doors have useful pockets. The saloon has boot mat and boot light, whilst the GL hatch has a fully carpeted load deck and hinged load cover which can be easily stored. Extensive colour key throughout enhances the light airy spaciousness of the Chevette GL which combines top luxury with high standards of overall running costs. I kind of like think when we're looking at this top of the range model it kind of like shows the shortcomings of the lower spec models rather than showing this has been a high spec model. In addition to cloth inserts, lower door sections are carpeted to obviate scuffing and both front doors have useful pockets. The saloon has boot mats and a boot light, whilst the GL hatch has a fully carpeted load deck and hinged load cover which can be easily stored. 
extensive colour keyed throughout enhances the light, airy spaciousness of the Chevette GL, which combines top luxury with high standards of overall running costs. I kind of think when it's describing this, it kind of like more shows what the other models haven't got rather than showing this as any particular luxury. Then we get this rather nice image of this Chevette GL. Again, I think this sort of black area at the map back really makes that stand out. And then finally, we've got specifications page. So as always, we'll have a quick glance through that as well. So yes, all models have this 1300 engine, a 1256 uh, four-cylinder um, engine. Uh, four-speed all synchro gearbox uh, or that three-speed GM um, optional auto and like I said I'm not going to go through all this because like I said this this video is going on a little bit but it kind of like gives you some idea of you know wheels and tires on there etc and fuel capacities the colors and trims on this particular model are extensive um, you can see you know you've got these um, four different seat types and the, they've all got different colors apart from that super basic one which is just a gray interior which and it looks like the basic model you could just have in white blue or uh, optional silver metallic all the others had a greater color choice so you got the polar white smoke blue Dove blue metallic, reed green, silver green metallic, Jamaica yellow, antique gold metallic, henna red, royal red, light grey and silver metallic. Of course, the metallics were there as an extra cost. And then it goes on to show some of the, the weights um, of the various models. And then it shows the Chevette range equipment. We've mentioned it as we've gone through the uh, brochure, but if you want to pause the screen to look at a more extensive list of what was available, here it is. And then finally, if we move to the opposite page, it tells us some of the options that would have been available. Um, it says static rear seat belts are now a new option for 82. That's becoming more and more common before it became a legal requirement. And there are some of those options you can actually uh, specify on the various models, the S, E, and then the L and G, L. And you can notice on the E, S and the E, some of them just aren't even available. Finally, we get this nice little chart showing the fuel consumptions. And you can see it was a pretty fuel efficient car with that small engine in there. So again, cheap to buy, cheap to run was its key points. And then we'll finish with the, you know, the final page um, showing that publication date of October 1981. So there we go, the Vauxhall Chevette. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. It's a bit of a long episode, so we'll wrap that up here by saying please do like, subscribe, and do take care, and we'll see you very soon. Goodbye.